Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads and I make skateboards. But up until now, I've only made one board at a time and I've really only made boards for myself. And I want to change that. So starting today, I am embarking on a journey to grow my setup from a small hobbyist kind of shop to a shop that's capable of producing at least a small volume of decks and become a real board manufacturer. Now, I don't have my sights set too high, I just would like the ability to maybe do some limited edition releases, get some decks and geometries under your feet, in hopes that you would enjoy the boards that I make the same way that I do. And in order to do that, the first thing I'm gonna need is a press. Hey, but Chris, didn't you build an electric press a few years ago? Yes, I did. But it had a number of issues. The frame would flex under load, and the twin motorcycle jacks I'm using wouldn't raise at the same rate, throwing my alignment off. This meant that I had to readjust the press every time I used it, which was a real pain, so it ended up getting put on the back burner and collecting dust. But after my trip to Carver and Stone and seeing their primarily wood-framed production presses, I was feeling ready to tackle this machine again. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, rebuild and upgrade my old electric press to get ready for production. And the first thing I need is a frame, so I banged this bad boy together real quick using some reclaimed pre-war beams I got from a demolition site when I was still working out of Brooklyn. They are true 2 inch by 4 inch beams and they've been holding up a brownstone for a century, so I imagine they're pretty dang strong. The old press was heavy, and this press is going to be even heavier, so before I add too much weight, I gotta get it situated on some casters so I can easily move it around the shop. The next thing I needed to do was make flat platforms at the top and bottom of the press to sandwich the molds and even out the clamping pressure. I'm the kind of shaper who gets bored making the same thing over and over again, so my mold system is designed to swap in and out instead of being permanently fixed to the press, and this means that I need a good flat mating surface in the press to keep everything aligned. Now, everything I learned at Carver and Stone tells me that this frame is probably more than beefy enough for the kind of pressures that I'll be using, but I've got this angle iron left over from the previous version of the press, and why not use it to further reinforce the frame? If I decide to upgrade to pneumatic or hydraulic at some point in the future, this will just help guarantee that my frame can take those higher forces. Lovely. With the steel in place, I'm ready to call the frame done. I'll say now that I replaced that top surface later with the one from the original press just to have something a little beefier and flatter in place. So next we're going to need our lifting mechanisms. I've been using these two motorcycle jacks and they have a ton of great benefits. In addition to exerting an appropriate amount of force, not too much, but enough, the steel frames of the jacks are also basically box tubing and that further helps to reinforce and strengthen the frame of the whole setup and distribute the clamping forces along the mold. But they're also the biggest problem I had with my last setup because when I drove them independently, they raised and lowered at different rates. So this time around, I'm going to make a linkage between the two machine screws to keep everything even. To do that, I need to modify one of the jacks to be driven from the other side. I had to move the hex driver socket thing to the opposite side of one of the screws, and to do that I had to grind down the threads on one end and re-drill for the retention pins. Fortunately for my purposes, this doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough. With that done, I can start making my linkage for the two jacks. I'm just making mine out of a section of black pipe gas line that I had laying around, which fit around the two drive shafts. I drilled my pipe, drilled through the shafts, and bolted everything in place. But now, with the shafts linked like that, the jacks should raise and lower at the same rate. 
Each jack is still going to be driven by its own geared motor, so this linkage is less to transfer power between the two setups, and more about keeping them in line with each other and just evening out the minor differences in drive. And hopefully it's robust enough to get a good long lifetime out of. For the electronics, I'm using the exact same setup as the old press, a 12 volt power source, a DC motor speed controller, and a set of identical windshield wiper motors with 3D printed metal drivers that I sourced from a print-on-demand service a few years ago. If you want the details of that whole system, I've got an entire series on the build of the original press, and while the new frame is different, the guts are basically the same. And with that all hooked up and powered, I have got a working press. And it is a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of a good press must be in want of making a skateboard. So, uh, so let's do that. For this board, I am using a 7-ply stack of rock maple veneers that I got from RawRocket.com, a new 3D printed skateboard mold that I have an entire video on coming out soon, and I'm also trying out this new glue roller for the first time. I want to use it for a few more decks before weighing in, but I'll do a full review once I feel like I've got the gist of it. I wet out my veneers, stack them in the mold, and it's into the press. And hey, that's looking good. It's a bit chilly where I'm at, so I gave it two days in the press to cure, a little bit longer than normal, so that I could pull it out and hopefully everything would be bonded up properly. I drilled my bolt holes and cracked the mold open. And yeah, that is a promising looking blank. I'm gonna give it about a week, maybe five days to post cure before cutting it. But at this point, it looks like I've got a perfectly usable blank on my hands. And I am pretty stoked about this new setup. It's a low tonnage press. I think the two jacks only put out about a ton and a half force combined, but the new frame is so robust that if I wanna upgrade to get more clamping force or the ability to press more decks at once, it should be a cakewalk. It should be really easy to do those upgrades. Up next in this journey towards being a small skateboard factory is the mold and my new 3D printed mold system. So if you wanna see that and a whole bunch of other awesome DIY board sport projects, you're just gonna have to go ahead and subscribe. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Shout out, as always, to the amazing crew that support me over on Patreon. It is their support that really keeps the channel alive, allows me to get materials, and keep making these projects week after week. I love having you guys along for the ride. So until next time, we're going to make some boards, and I'll see you soon. There's a lyric somewhere that's I am, I am a factory, right? I'm not making that up. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I'm not a factory man, I'm a factory man. <laughs>